This is part three of your needle felted cat head series. I'm going to show you how to needle felt long fur. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have attached the long fur on this beautiful tabby Berman cat. Don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss out on new tutorials. So in part two, we completed the short fur on the face. I'll walk you through the next seven steps for long fur. Step one is planting long fur. Before I show you the technique, I'm just marking out the lovely M shape of the tabby markings, which will come in the next step. I'm simply mapping them out with small tufts of my brown wool. Before attaching the fur, I'm preparing some strands of the cream mixed in with the brown wool. It's best to prepare several lengths of this I'm hand blending simply by stacking and then very carefully pulling the pieces apart and restacking again. To plant the fur, I'm pinching the centre of the strand and placing that middle fold onto the cat head. Stabbing the centre line with my barbed needle will partially fix it into place. Then fold it down and continue stabbing into the wool with your needle. Go at various angles to ensure that all the fibres are attached. You can also stab to the side or fold the whole thing over and go on the other side as well. A very good tug will pull it out, but hopefully gentle tugs will not and it should be firmly stabbed into place. Ideally, you want to be layering from the back towards the front of the face. Position the next piece slightly in front of the previous one. We call this layering of the long fur. The fur should lay in the same direction as it would on the real animal and when you lay the fur down flat there should be no gaps showing in between. I'm using my needle to continue to blend the colours together, kind of like brushing the fibres so that they all go in the same way. Continue to add the fur towards the nose but you're going to stop when you get to those brown markings. Step 2. The Tabby M Markings to create these distinct tabby markings in the shape of an M on the forehead, I am preparing some lengths of brown. If you look carefully, the middle of the M has a kind of W shape. Now there's plenty of ways you could do this, this is just my way, so I'm starting off with a piece of the brown. And stabbing it into place just like with the previous pieces. But I'm not flattening the whole piece down yet. This makes it easier to place my cream and brown mix immediately either side of this brown piece. So that's what I'm doing next. Once they're in place, I'm spreading out the brown, keeping the very middle for the upward stroke of the W and cutting to form the bottom curves of the W. Now when I say W, um, it's the most closely resembling thing I can think of, but just keep checking back with your reference photo to ensure that you have the shape that you'd like to achieve. Then to complete the W, I'm adding thinner strands of the brown to create those outer upright parts of the W shape. To complete the overall M shape of my tabby markings, I'm adding in some of the cream and brown mix just outside of the W shape. I'll do two layers of this. And then some brown to complete the M shape. At this point, it may look a bit strange, but we're going to be doing some more kind of cutting and uh, styling and defining those shapes. While I'm at this stage, I'm filling in the gap between the nose and the M shape. I'm mixing my grey colour with my cream colour, the same as I used for the nose area, preparing several pieces and then attaching these into place. To ensure there's no harsh line between the short fur and the long fur that I've just added, 
I'm using my reverse needle to pluck out some of the underlying wool to make it fluffy along that line. This is one way of blending. I'll pop a link on screen to my reverse needle felting guide in case you'd like to see more about these techniques. Give this whole area a trim with your scissors. By using the needle to tease the fibres into a shape and stabbing where you need to and then also cutting, you should be able to define the shape that you're looking for. I actually find this really fun to do, although it can be a little bit tedious. See how you go and hopefully you'll get those lovely tabby markings. Step three, long fur along the brow and jawline. In this step, we'll continue to add layers of wool to the outer parts of the face toward the nose. Later, we'll add very long pieces to get the real length of the face fur. But at this point, I want to continue with the cream and brown mix. So start further back from the eye, working towards the corner of the eye. Layer the wool as you did before. You will be trimming this a lot shorter later, but I just want to get the pieces in place to start with. It's much easier to trim than it is to try and add on length afterwards if you haven't got the right width of the face. Then add pieces above the eye, being careful to go directly behind the fur that you've created for the line around the eye. Add some caramel brown at the top of your M-shaped corners. Then I'm adding some rather long brown pieces in front of where the ears will go. Add a bit of the solid cream colour, then fill in the rest with your mix of cream and brown. Now in this tutorial I'm showing you the tabby Berman, but it could be that you're making another breed of cat, so just keep referring back to your real cat pictures. Actually, what colour fur does your cat have? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to know the kind of cat that you're working on. So I'm looking at the photo and trimming where I think the shape should be. I'm showing you one side of the face all in one go, but if you're doing this, you might want to do a bit on each side as you go, just to be more accurate. Um, whatever you do on one side, you just need to remember to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm adding some cream fur now to extend the jawline a bit further. then giving it a good trim. When I get to the join with the whisker pads with the short fur there, I'm adding a very thin layer of my cream merino wool. Then I'm using the reverse needle to pull some of the fibers through so that that area is blended. It also offers a nice kind of gradient from short into long. I'm adding a bit more of the gray. To create a jagged edge, you can snip directly inwards towards the fur. You can see that this cat is coming along so well now. Lots of layers of gorgeous fluffy fur. And here is the other side with fur added in the same way. Off camera, I have stabbed and firmed that outer jawline a little bit further so that it dips in. Now we have step four for adding more of those cream layers. Behind the layers that we've done so far with the cream and brown mix are some luscious long layers of cream. So I prepared my pieces a lot longer than before. Before I add them, I'm thinning that area and making the edge a little bit straighter. Just remember to do the same on the other side so that it's symmetrical. Add your longer cream pieces. And then round off the shape with your scissors. And here I've done the other side in the same way. 
In step five, I will show you how I did the dark marking details just below the eyes. You'll see on the gray just below the eyes that there's a little streaks of dark. These are part of the tabby markings. So I've got my dark brown, you can mix brown with black and just add very thin strands. You might want to use your 40 gauge triangle or maybe even a 42 gauge. Depends how thin you want them. I'm also adding a little bit to the very corner of the eye going down towards the nose. I felt that it just needed a little bit of darker shadowing there. Then just like in tutorial part two, when I was doing the whisker pad dots, I'm using the reverse needle to bring some finer pieces of wool through the dark marking so that they're not so solid in colour. The line is more broken up and more natural. Then you can go over the fibres with a normal needle to stab it down. Step six, we'll be doing the dark fur in front of the ears. Wait, what? The cat's got some ears? Yes, if you'd like to know how I made and attached those, look out for my next tutorial. Once your ears are in place, you can then add some of the darker wool to go in front of them. You can see when I added the ears, I already added some of the darker wool to the backs of the ears, mainly to fix the ears into place. And our final step is adding long fur to the back of the head. So you'll be adding some cream coloured wool to the back of the head, starting from the bottom, working your way up to the top. You might want to use a sheet of plastic or similar to prevent any fluffing up of fibres as you work on the other side of your head. When you've completed the layers, you can then work on the brown parts behind the ears. You can add long lengths, but in my case I decided to reverse felt these sections. This will create a fluffy look. If you want to, you can use the comb side of an eyebrow brush to brush the fibres in the direction that you want. Give a little trim. And then all I'm doing now is using my needle to go over all the fibres, separating them out and styling them, snipping where necessary. Then add the last few pieces of your cream to the very top of the head until you meet the creamy brown section. And there you have the finished result. I'd love to know how you're getting on with your own cat projects. Yes, long fur does take a little while to do but it can be really fun and it will give you that lovely realistic look on your needle felted animal.